You know, one of the things I enjoy about this conference is so many states are represented, so many different types of Angus operations, so many different environments, production environment. It's a chance for me to interact with lots of different people from all over the country. There's lots of states of Angus genetics too, not just one. And so I want to talk about some of those states and where we see the Angus breed, where your organization sees the Angus breed, and where we see futures and opportunities. I'll start with leadership. That's in our DNA, that's, that's the history. That when I stepped for the first time in 3201 Frederick, I knew that leadership was what that place had been about, and that was one of my challenges. And that's what we work together on as a staff, a board, a membership, every day. We've got a long history of leadership, and it's our challenge to advance that. I think a lot of times Angus breeders take for granted the genetic progress they've made and assume that every other part of the cattle business has done the same. It's not, the gap, the gap is widening. We've bent the growth, growth curve more dramatically than any other part of, of the beef business and really much of animal agriculture. We've added value, we've added product quality, we've improved performance, we've improved efficiency simultaneously. It's almost amazing to think that that happens. And we're continued to, con to move forward in that particular path, more leadership, more advancement, to help grow your business and grow your customers. Well, you'll hear a lot about Angus Link, you've already heard a lot about it, but that's one of the opportunities that we see to be leaders in the beef industry. Because we know the value of Angus genetics, you know the value of Angus genetics, your customers are getting some of the value of Angus genetics, we want to grow that. We want them to get a bigger piece of the pie that they've earned with the genetics that you've helped them put into their commercial herds. The last couple of years I've talked a lot about genetic evaluation. There's been lots of new things, lots of questions. You know, today we're at a position where we've run the single step genetic evaluation over 60 times. It's become routine. It's not new anymore. But it's working really well, not just because of the methodology and the technology, but because of your contribution, not just your half a million genotypes, although that's amazing that you've made that kind of commitment to advancing the breed. But it's just as important the nine million weaning weights you've contributed, the two million ultrasound records, and the largest feed intake database for pedigreed cattle available. That continued commitment to phenotypic measurement is what's gonna drive this forward. And so we appreciate your commitment, your dedication, because we can't do it all with any one piece. We've got to have the whole thing to move this forward and add more accuracy. Innovation is what AGI was created for. The I could just as easily stand for innovation as it does for incorporated. That's why it was our charge from the beginning and that's where we're going forward. You know, people ask me, breeders ask me, how do we take the next step? It's amazing that we can test a young animal with a DNA sample and get a .4 accuracy but how do we get to point six? How do we get to point seven? It's possible, this is how. By building the most comprehensive genomic database, your board's approved a new initiative, what we call the Angus Genome Project. There's been a lot of genomic sequencing going on all over the United States and lots of different kinds of organizations, institutions, universities, institutes, and some globally as well because our genetics reach well beyond our shores. We want St. Joseph to be the repository of that. We want that information to come together in your building with your people so that we have the ability to use that information for your benefit. So that's gonna be a big emphasis in the upcoming year. We've already acquired getting close to 100 animals with sequences coming in and parts of 3,000 animals with sequencing projects going in. That's gonna grow and grow and grow. Some of the new things that were built onto the Angus GS tip, we're just beginning to, to look at that information but we see real opportunities to improve the accuracies of traits that are lowly heritable, like heifer pregnancy. We're seeing some regions that are particular interest and we're going to build those into the evaluation as the data indicates. At the National Western Stock Show in Denver, we're going to release the first beef breeds PAP EPD. Folks, the folks that sell bulls into the high country have told us how important that is. And with the collaboration with Colorado State University, other parties, we now have a database that we can produce that genetic evaluation on a research basis. And that's something that we're going to continue to grow and offer that to the folks in that part of the world. We've talked a lot about our value index update project with Abacus Bio. You'll hear more about that in the upcoming two days as part of the educational program. That innovation is what drives AGI. It's really what we're all about. That's how we're trying to help you grow your business. 
We ask you a lot of questions this year, probably more than you've been asked in a long time. We sent out a membership survey and we got an amazing response. Our partners, as part of this project, were surprised by the response. I wasn't. I knew that you'd fill that out. I knew you'd take the time. And as those of you that did it know, it wasn't one of those quick three question surveys that took you three minutes. You put a lot of time and thought into that project, to that process, and we appreciate the feedback. There's a lot more to be gleaned from that. We're just beginning to drill into that data, and you'll hear a lot more about it in the upcoming months in the Angus Journal and reports and other information. But I'm just gonna give you a little snapshot of one of the things that came to the top. We ask you about traits. We ask you about what you saw as needs in your breeding program. And one of the things that came to the top, maybe not surprisingly, was cow longevity. We understand the need for that. We understand the importance of that to your commercial customers. But your response has pushed that up to the top of our priorities. And so that's something we're going to be emphasizing. That doesn't say those other things aren't important too. Everything we put out there, you said is important. But that's something that certainly caught our attention. Education is a big part of what we do at AGI, and I'm very proud of the team that I work with, Steve Miller, Kelly Retallick, in terms of getting the information out to you. We understand that this technology has no value if you're not in a position to take advantage of it. So that's a big part of what we do and something we take pride in, but something we want to continue to double our efforts and put out uh, in upcoming months and years. One of the ideas that we've had and we're going to maybe demo with a little bit, we'll see how it goes, is the idea of a question of the week. Because there are a lot of questions that come in. We appreciate those of you that take the time to call us, the ones of you that send in an email that we respond to. We see you at a sale, we see you in an event somewhere out. But we know you're not the only one wondering about that question. And so if there's an easily way we can put together a quick video, a three minute, this is why this is, this is how that works, put that out where you can grab that, take advantage of that, take that back into your own operation, share that knowledge, better explain it to your customers. That's something that, that we're very focused on. And that's something that we're gonna try to do in the upcoming year. I wanna draw your attention to Maternal Plus. We've talked, the cow longevity thing stuck out, obviously. Something we've talked about for a long time is the importance of cow longevity records. When we've made tremendous innovation for lots of different traits in this particular breed, we've done it with data. We've measured the traits, we've put it into evaluations, and we've made selection based on that data. We can attack and improve and grow the maternal traits of the Angus cow. We need the data. And that's what Maternal Plus is all about. An inventory-based recording system that allows you to update us on which cows stay in the herd and which ones don't. Very important to your customers. One of the things our board did in the last year is to create an incentive program to participate in Maternal Plus when folks file their their cow inventory updates, they get a rebate. And we've seen a big growth in Maternal Plus since that point, and we appreciate the commitment of folks to be part of that. We're gonna to continue to grow that. As I mentioned, cow longevity is gonna be a high priority so that we soon will have, in the upcoming year or so, have a research EPD on cow longevity for Maternal Plus participants. That's something that we wanna work on because we think it's really important. That's what you told us. I wanna close my comments with some gratitude because I am blessed to work with the best team in the business and to work for the best bosses that, that anyone could ever have. You know, I'm the best geneticists, the best information systems professionals, the best customer service reps, the folks that on an average day answer 100 calls, make another 50 to 75 calls, process 1,000 DNA samples out to the labs overnight, process back into our archives another DNA, 1,000 DNA samples. And some of those phone calls, as you know, can be quite long and quite complicated. We appreciate what they do. I'm really blessed to work with that team. Blessed to have an elected leadership that's visionary, that's aggressive, that's excited about the future. Most importantly, the membership. It's amazing to have a group like you with such a storied history that is truly more excited about the future than you are about your past. Thanks again for the opportunity to visit with you. I'll be here the rest of the event as will Steve and Kelly and all our team Look forward to visiting with you one-on-one -on -one in some of the educational sessions in the Angus booth. Please stop by if we haven't visited before. We're here to help you uh, learn more about the business and what we do. At this time, I want to introduce another part of my gratitude, which would be our partners. You know, we're blessed to have some great partners to work with through this business that help us accomplish what we do at AGI. One of those is Neogen, and Dr. Stuart Bach is our next speaker. 
Dr. Bach was really one of the pioneers of beef genetics. 15 years ago, he was all in in beef genetics and beef genomic testing. At that point, I wasn't even confident it was going to work. His investment, his commitment, it's been exciting. It's been great to work with Stuart and his team at Neogen on, this, on these projects. Please welcome Dr. Stuart Bach. Thanks, Dan. Get that very, appreciate that. Well, good morning, everybody. And uh, it's a delight to be back with you again this morning and uh, to have the opportunity to share a, a little bit of time with you and kind of bring you up to date on, uh, on some of our recent activities. And, and obviously, we are here and we have the opportunity to celebrate 40 years of success with CAB. And what I'm going to talk to you a little bit about this morning then are some of the tools that we're going to be able to deploy in the coming years that will help us to advance the brand that John talked so eloquently about this morning. And uh, I looked up at that this morning and I thought, you know, I was going through my slides and I thought, how did those guys get a picture of my grandfather and, uh, and uh, be able to slip that into the slide presentation? I wondered who that old guy was with no hair and big nose and ears sticking out like taxi cab doors, uh, I guess I'm going to have to learn to live with it. I also uh, get going on a topic like this, and clearly I'm a preacher. Uh, I'm uh, lecturing people, but I'm going to update you a little bit on the activities. A year ago at this time, we had the distinct pleasure to work with the American Angus Association and Dan's team to launch a new product called Angus GS. And this was a product, this is your product, this was built by you, and this was built for you. This was going to be a genomic tool that harnessed all of the available technology that we had, that was going to allow us to be able to harness the power of the new one-step genetic evaluation, but also was going to allow us to look towards the future uh, that was going to be able to, uh, to give us some insight into new and more exciting things that Dan just talked on uh, briefly recently. Most importantly, however, this was a collaboration. And uh, we have a lot of opportunity uh, to work with some of the very largest customers around the world. And uh, the, the activities that we undertook in the development of Angus GS represented a collaboration and it represented the distillation of almost 15 years of work and insight and knowledge that we could bring to bear on the development of a product that you would be able to use for the betterment of the Angus breed. And we were excited about the opportunity to participate in that. And I can say with confidence as I stand in front of you today, I've had the good pleasure and I've had the good fortune and have been blessed over the past 15 years to be working in an area of science and technology that frankly is awe-inspiring. You saw some of that from Dr. Wells earlier this morning. Uh, but I'm also, I'm also proud to say that we've been able to take a lot of that information that we've gathered over the past 15 years and we really distilled it down into, crea into the creation of your product. And there's no doubt that the Angus GS is the most advanced custom genotyping tool avail available in the beef industry today anywhere in the world. I'm extremely pleased about that. And what does that mean for you? Well, you, you know, every time you sell an animal, your reputation goes with it. And so you need to be assured that when you sell that bull and you tell that commercial, commercial cow-calf producer that bull will do this, then you've got to be assured that that's the case. And this tool will help you do that. I've also seen over the last 15 or so years a real evolution in the, in the utilization of this technology. Years ago, we used to profile bulls and we'd sell the bulls on the basis of those genomic profiles. But over the last few years, what I've really seen are the switched on breeders are doing an ever increasing percentage of their cow herd. And that becomes really important because it's you focusing on the adoption of technology to build the cow families that you need to produce the bulls of the future. And finally, in a nod to John and Mark and all the wonderful things that they do at, uh, at CAB, this is a tool that will help us continue to provide the consistent, nutritious, and healthful product that you need for the future. <clears throat> so when I stood in front of you last year, I, we made some promises. 
We promised you that we were going to do some things, and it's time for us to check the scorecard. First thing we talked about was high quality data. How did we do on that front? Well, if you look at the graph on the right hand side, you'll see that this is the representation of the situation of SNP markers on the genome of cattle for any one of the you know, previously commonly used, quote, you know, high density arrays. And I point out to you the fact that, that situated throughout that are large gaps highlighted by some of those black boxes. And so when you looked at that, what we find is there are regions of the genome for which there were previously no genetic markers. And if there were genes that were important in that area, it was impossible for us to track the inheritance of that from one generation to the other. So one of the things that we did with Angus GS is we filled in the gaps. There are no such gaps exist in the Angus GS. And more importantly, if you spend any time with me, you'll always hear me say a SNP is not a SNP. There are differences in the content that you put on that. And the graph on the left-hand side shows that the, in the black bar, we picked SNPs, and here everybody's eyeballs roll back in their head when they hear me talking about minor allele frequencies, but we picked SNPs with tremendous, uh, uh, tremendous information content. We talked to you about fast turnaround time. How'd we do? We processed tens of thousands of samples. You saw the figures on the, on the screen earlier today. And we managed to do that. We did that in 10.6 days from the time that sample hit our doorstep until the team at AGI had the data back that they needed to do your genetic evaluation. And this occurs because there's a fantastic team that coordinates between St. Joe and our crew. The other thing I want to point out to you is we did that with over a 99% first pass success rate. That means that you guys did a heck of a job collecting good samples. You got them in, they came to us, and when we put them on that wonderful new chip that was Angus GS, it really worked. And that's time and that's money that you need to be able to uh, make the decisions. And finally, we talked about fair pricing, and Alan mentioned this before. You know, over the past year, our strategies of democratizing technology and, and capitalizing on what Dr. Wells showed about the Moore's Law, uh, and we've been able to transfer that back to you. And so there's been some significant savings for you. That's money that you're able to reinvest into your operation. But the other thing I want to point out, and this is really critical, I talked about this some time ago, and that is you all have done what we told you to do, and you began to profile females, and you began to capture phenotypes on that, because those are the things that we're going to be, need to be able to uh, investigate the traits of greatest economic significance. And Dan mentioned some of those. So you've got to do, continue to do your job of genotype, or phenotyping. We're working with other partners, and I know that some of you, and many of you, have started to use a tissue sampling unit, and that's being made even easier so that it can facilitate collection now. There's a, going to be a small uh, handheld reader that will allow you to scan the tissue sampling barcode and scan the EID or RFID of the animal, marry those two things up, and make an absolutely foolproof submission to the, uh, to the team in AGI. <clears throat> So if you get on this rocket ship and you're going at 140 miles an hour on the bullet train, as you accelerate genetic improvement through the adoption of these tools, you better hope that the car that you're sitting in will get you to the end of the journey. And I'm happy to say that the Angus GS, that car is going to get you there to where you need to, what, where you need to get to. Dan talked about the development of this and one of the things that we, we, we incorporated into this, we had some inside knowledge. We knew that there were sections of the genome from our prior studies that were going to be influencing key traits like fertility, feed efficiency, environmental adaptation. Uh, Dan talked about PAP scoring and so forth, health traits including, uh, including things like uh, 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 BRD, et cetera. And I want to just touch on that very briefly by talking about this animal. So this is a bull by the name of Pawnee Chief. And he was one of the most influential bulls in the Holstein breed, produced over 500,000 daughters, 
Why was he a good, why was he a popular bull? He was a popular bull because he was a highly, pro, his daughters were highly prolific milkers. They produced a lot of milk. Unfortunately, unfortunately, Pawnee Chief had a little tiny defect and it was referred to as a de novo mutation because it was present in him and it was not present in his mother and father. So he had this little tiny defect and unfortunately he passed it on to his son Mark who was nearly as prolific in the Holstein breed. And what that did was it was a small defect that when present in the homozygous form when the developing embryo got to be 18 days of age it, well, the gene would control the closure of the spinal column and a gene defect in that uh, particular area would cause the embryo to lose vitality, it would be resorbed, and the cow would come back in heat. And she looked just like a heifer or a cow that failed to get pregnant on the first go around. And if you bred her back to the bull, there was a 75% chance that she would get pregnant and you'd go on your merry way. And these two bulls propagated this problem widely throughout the Holstein industry. Well, here's the good news. As we began to do genomics, we began to realize there was a difference. We were able to take the genomic data and we were able to hone down onto a specific region of the genome. You remember those big graphs, uh, big plots uh, that uh, Dr. Wells talked about, lactose tolerance and so forth? Well, we did the same thing here. And then we had some sequence data and we were able to identify the specific causative mutation and that allowed us to put that onto a chip and we began to select aggressively against this particular issue. And lo and behold, what's happened? What's happened over the past few years is through the application of that technology, fertility in the Holstein breed is actually on the increase. Well, the amazing thing is through your efforts and because you guys have been genotyped with Angus GS and because you've been sending in your phenotypes religiously, the team at AGI have conducted some of the initial analysis and that figure that you see in that graph is what's referred to as the Manhattan plot. Now, I don't know that any of you saw the figure from Dr. Wells, but his graph ended at about 30. The size of his peak was about 30. That was, that was 10 to the 30th. The size of these peaks are three to four times the size of that. There are signals in the genome captured by Angus GS that are pointing to areas of extreme importance for traits like heifer for fertility, heifer pregnancy, and so on. And do you remember Dan mentioned about the sequence project? Well, the smart people in, in, in St. Joe are putting together that resource. So just as we've done with Pawnee Chief, we're beginning to dissect the genome of Angus cattle and put content onto chips that will make for even better in the future. And so this is the process that we're underway with the team in St. Joe. We build a great chip. You guys do your part by sending in phenotypes and genotyping animals. We go through the analysis phase. We identify regions of important. We bring in additional information like sequence. We find the content that we need and we put it on to the next version of the chip. And I'm really excited and proud to tell you that the next version of the Angus, uh, Angus GS, the Angus GS V2, is well in development and will be coming soon. And this represents, I think, the very best of the scientific process. That as, as, as Spencer said, with citizen science, that is all the things that you do to contribute that data, coupled with the smart folks down in uh, St. Joe, and, uh, and, and through these external collaborations, we're able to, uh, we're really be able to uh, move the dial. And I'm extremely pleased and excited and proud to be a part of that, uh, of that process. It's not all about uh, production traits. We have to do a good job with uh, production trait, but I don't think uh, John Stick is quite ready to retire. And uh, Mark McCulley, uh, has a daughter that needs to get through university here, and so we better keep them gainfully employed. So there's quite a lot of content on the Angus GS that's tied into consumer traits like tenderness and uh, meat coloration and so forth. Things that speak to continuing to build the brand and drive demand for certified Angus beef. And, uh, and so it's, it's, it's exciting to see what's going on on that front as well. <clears throat> 
I may not be around doing this forever. I've had, a, I've had a great time over the last 15 years being involved in this. It's been my pleasure to work with the American Angus Association. This isn't my retirement speech, by the way, but, but clearly there's some snow on the, uh, well, maybe the snow blew off, I'm not sure. But uh, uh, what is really exciting for me <coughs> is to look around and see the next generation who are coming. These kids, as Spencer said, they're not afraid of this technology. They want to embrace this. And at GeneSeq, we're very pleased and proud as part of the Neogen family to be able to host a lot of these groups as they come through and some of these people that work with us every day. And I couldn't be more excited about the future of the breed than I am today. And my final comment to you is, leadership is difficult. And several years ago, the American Angus Association Board of Directors undertook a strategic review. And one of the things that they identified was the important role that the American Angus Association would play in leadership for the breed on a global basis. And as a testament to that, when we began to develop this new tool in conjunction with that team, we were afforded the opportunity to be able to take this product on a global basis. And through our network of labs in countries around the world, we offer Angus GS services to, uh, to breeders in various countries around the world to help them uh, improve their cattle. And perhaps most, as, most importantly, or just as importantly, is the fact that many of you, or most of you, are involved in one way or another, directly or indirectly, with the international export of the fine, high-quality genetics that you produce. And it is true that someone who purchases that in order to truly appreciate the value of the product that you produce have to have tools that allow them to be, be able to objectively assess that. And so through this collaboration and the, and the global use of Angus GS, we have a single standard that we can use around the globe that will systematically improve the, uh, the Angus breed. <laughs> As I finish up then, I simply want to say, it's been our great pleasure to have participated with you in this journey and to be able to continue to work <laughs> in the development of some of these tools. Uh, we're blessed every day to do this, and we're blessed every day to have our partnerships with folks like you. And I simply want to thank you for that and uh, wish you a great convention. Thank you. <laughs>